Hi, and welcome to Grounded, a beginner's course for digital mapping using QGIS. This course will teach you how to make your own maps in five lessons, each one only taking between 30 to 60 minutes to complete. Remember to go at your own pace. Pause and replay these tutorials as many times as you wish. In this video, we will set up the folder structure for saving QGIS projects and data. Then we will open the program and explore the workspace. Firstly, however, you need to ask yourself, can you use the same computer every time to complete the course? This is important because we are going to set up a folder where you will save everything in one place and you will need to use the same folder each time. If you cannot use the same computer for every QGIS class, then you should save everything onto a personal USB and work from the device each time. Once you have decided whether you will use the computer desktop or the USB, create a folder called QGIS and then your initials. For example, my name is Fiona Stapleton, so my folder is called QGIS FS. Within the QGIS folder, create a subfolder called Workspaces and another called Shapefiles. Now we are ready to open the QGIS software. Look for the green Q symbol. You might have to find it using the Start menu. I am using version 3.10 Karuna in this video, so depending on the version that you're using, things may look a little different, but that is fine. When you open QGIS, you will see the menu at the top, which provides access to all the functions. The toolbar below the menu bar provides access to some of the more commonly used functions. There are two panels to the left. The browser panel is for navigating in the database. The layers panel shows layers that you've added to your workspace. We will be using this frequently. To the right of the panels is a large open space. This is where the map itself is displayed. At the bottom of the window, there is a status bar, which provides information about project settings, including coordinates and scale. In the status bar coordinate box, type world. The world map is now added to your layers panel and it loads in your map view. Like Google Maps, this can be dragged and zoom in and out of. Zoom in to Ireland. Before we finish this exercise, we are going to add one more toolbar to the layout, which contains some common functions that we will be using. Right click on some empty space in the toolbar area and tick Manage Layers Toolbar. A toolbar is now added to the layout. And now your workspace is set up to show some of the most commonly used features in QGIS. We don't need to explore the different features any further from the moment, however. We will instead begin to use QGIS to make maps straight away in the next exercise. Don't worry about trying to remember how to do any of the steps that you're about to learn. The manual and or these tutorials are there for you to return to and to refer to at any time. The only way that you will start to naturally recall how to do things in QGIS is by using it over and over again. Even QGIS experts don't trouble themselves too much about being the best at remembering how to do things. Instead, they focus on being the best at keeping good notes for them to consult and build on. So, with a pen and notebook ready, let's start your first map. In this exercise, we are going to create your first digital map using QGIS, mapping the location of your school. So we open QGIS as before. Remember, if you can't see the Q symbol, then use the start menu. Believe it or not, but as soon as you open the QGIS software and have an internet connection, you are actually ready to create your first digital map. As soon as you see the workspace, you should save it. Press Project and Save As. Choose your workspace folder, and let's call this project School Location. Q 
keep the file type as QGZ and press save. Now we are going to add base mapping and zoom into your school location. We will do this through a feature called a plugin. So click plugins on the menu toolbar and choose manage and install plugins. A plugin is simply a component that adds a specific feature to an existing computer program. In this case, the QGIS program. Search for quick map services and select install. Once you see that it has changed to reinstall plugin, press close. Your workspace has actually slightly changed. The quick map services globe icon now appears in the toolbar. Click on this icon with a green plus. Choose OSM and select OSM standard. The OpenStreetMap world view now appears in your map viewer and the layer has been added to the layer panel. Zoom in to the location of your school. In this example, I am zooming in to Cranach College in County Donegal. You can change the scale of your map by selecting the down arrow at the side of the scale box. You can play around with choosing different scales here. For this exercise, Make your scale 1 is to 10,000, as this shows streets and buildings as a good representative area in the vicinity of your school. Now we are going to highlight your school location with a symbol on the map. On the menu toolbar, select Layer, Create Layer, and New Shapefile Layer. A shapefile is a data storage format for storing the location, shape and attributes of geographic features. To save your shapefile in the shapefiles folder, you must direct it using the three dots browsing button. Write the file name school and keep as type ESRI shapefile. Press save. Make sure the geometry type says point and leave all other options as they are and press OK. A school shapefile now appears in the layers panel as a layer. This layer is currently empty. We edit it to place a point on the map where the school is. Right click the layer and select toggle editing. At first it seems that nothing happened, but a yellow pencil has appeared beside the school shapefile and the editing icon in the toolbar has become shaded in. These are highlighting that the layer is now in edit mode. Other icons that were greyed out are now also available to select. We will add a point to the map using the Add Point feature, which has now become clickable. When you select this, the cursor changes to a crosshair. Click on your school on the map and a dialog box opens. Change the ID to 1 and press OK. The crosshair has left behind a point feature where you clicked on the map. The yellow pencil has also changed to orange in the layers panel. This is showing that we have made some unsaved edits. It's important to save your edits. To do this, click on the Save Layer Edits icon. There is a small orange pencil showing us that there are current unsaved edits. The layers panel pencil also changes back to yellow telling us that the edits are saved, but the layer is still in edit mode. Now we'll add a label to our point feature. Keep the layer in edit mode to do this. Right click on the school shape file in the layers panel and click open attribute table. Click new field in the attribute table.
In the new field dialog box, put the name as label and change the type to text. A new column appears beside the ID column called Label. Type your school's name into the cell. Now click on the Save Edits icon of the Attribute table. Then close the Attribute table by clicking the small X. Turn off editing mode by clicking the toggle editing icon. If it asks if you want to save layer edits, press save. Now we need to turn on the label in order to see it on our map. Right click the school shape file in the layers panel and select properties. In the resulting window, select labels and choose single labels. In the value drop down, Select Label and then press OK. Your map should now show the label of your school name, similar to what is shown on the screen. We are now ready to export the map as an image. The image will be whatever is currently showing on your screen. Drag the map around and zoom in or out until what you see is what you want to export. When you are ready, select Project, Import Export and Export Map to Image. Don't change anything in the resulting window and press Save. Save your map in a new folder called Exported Maps within your QGIS folder. Leave the file type as PNG and you can call the map School Location Map. And press Save. Congratulations, you have made your first map. Your map shows your school location in relation to the local roads. This map image can be easily included in emails, on a poster, social media, etc. Of course, what we created is very basic. For instance, there is no map title, scale bar, or a north arrow, all very important features of mapping. As you progress on this course, your mapping skills will improve vastly and you will learn many other useful ways that maps can help solve problems and help in managing our environment. More importantly, you will be allowed to be creative in your own map production and by the end of the course, you will find that you have the skills to progress on your own. Until next time!